Call now for the 2010 Steiner Tractor Parts Catalog, featuring the largest selection of new aftermarket parts for your antique or classic tractor. On this Tractor Fanatic webisode, it's back to the White River Valley Antique Show for the final time as we get to fire up a beautifully restored John Deere 820 and we visit with the owner of an unusual two-cycle single piston engine. Okay, we're with Ben, and Ben, you've got a very nice example of an 820, 1958, right? Right. And this was kind of the big boy of John Deere's line back then, right? Right, yeah, it was the big tractor. Yeah, and the unique thing about it, first of all, it's got a, what, a large two-cylinder diesel engine, but it starts with a four-cylinder gas engine, right? Right. Now, what was the idea behind that? Uh, extreme weather conditions, you could always start the gasoline four-cylinder and it would warm the, the big two-cylinder diesel up. You could get it to start. Technology wasn't that great for electric starting yeah. engines, so they were difficult to start with electric. Now, this is a beautiful example. Uh, when did you have it restored? Or did you work uh, on it yourself? Or? Yeah, me and some friends of mine, it's been two years ago now we, we finished it. Well, it's very, very nice. Now, I assume you just show it? You don't really work it in the field? Right, yeah, I don't work it much anymore. <laughs> grind, grind feed with it and some light work. But you don't want to get it too dirty now. So how long did it take and why did you pick this model to restore? I always wanted one of these big ones that are that are odd. You don't see too many of them at the shows. And they're heavy and hard to hard to lug around. But. Now, is there anything else unusual about this particular model? This is just a standard model? or? Just standard model, and like to say, this was the, the big boy of its time. Yeah. Can you, can you go ahead and show us how it starts up? Huh? Sure. What you have to go through to start it? Sure. First, you have to turn the gas on for the, the small gas engine. Turn the ignition on for it. Get it fired up here. Bring your diesel engine up off of idle. Have to engage the clutch for the pony engine. Let so the gasoline some... engine is turning the diesel engine. Right. Get her cranking over good, then you can dump the compression on it. There you go. That's very cool, Ben. I appreciate you showing us that. Okay, thank you. And I know you're getting ready to go into parade, so good luck. Okay, thanks. Don't rely on standard insurance for your collector vehicles and collectibles. American Collectors Insurance provides affordable, agreed-valued coverage for collectible cars, trucks and motorcycles, antique farm tractors, and for die-cast and automobilia collections. Get a fast and free quote at AmericanCollectors.com today. At a show like this, you'll see all kinds of stationary engines, most of them of the hit-and-miss variety but the distinctive sound of this engine stood out from the crowd. Okay, well, I'm here with Rhett, and Rhett, you've got a very interesting stationary engine here. I know it's kind of a hybrid, you were telling me. What do we got here? This is actually what they call a half-breed engine. It was originally a steam engine, and later, as technology advanced, they converted the engine to run on wellhead gas off the oil wells. So they replaced the, from here forward, they replaced the cylinder with a gas cylinder and piston and the intake valve and added the second flywheel. That's why one flywheel is actually slightly larger than the other flywheel. And that was part of the conversion kit and that's where they come up with the half-breed engine. Okay, so they actually did this back in the day. Yes, this would have been done early 1900s, the, late right, 1900s. The, somewhere the pumper would have installed the kit on the engine setting on site. The other interesting thing, when I first walked by, I thought this was a hit and miss engine, but you're telling me this is actually a two-cycle. Yes, this engine's actually a two-cycle. It's 
what happens is it actually draws a fuel and air mixture in the bottom up into the cylinder and then there's ports in the back side that actually goes into a transfer cavity and it pushes the fuel. When the piston comes back, it pushes the next charge in Over front of the into. piston. Okay. And then, and then fires. Fires again. Yes. Okay. And so what what do we got on the front here? This is the hot tube ignition. Inside, that's what they call the chimney, the piece that's discolored sticking up. There's a stainless steel pipe nipple inside there that you heat up basically until it's glowing cherry red. And when your fuel and air mixture goes up in it, that ignites and that's how you achieve your combustion. Okay. So you're telling me that's kind of dependent that's on the temperature plug. of the day and right. the wind conditions and things. Right. How fast it's cooling and whatever. Right. Okay. Uh, so what would this be used for? This would run um, rod line style oil wells where they had to set one engine out in the center and uh -huh. have a power or a band wheel and run several pump jacks off of this one engine. And what kind of RPM would they run? Is this about normal? Is this no, this is slow. So they would have run around four. So it would be pop, 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 pop. Right, okay. All right. So it would be a lot faster than it is now. Yeah. And is, is this running off of propane? Or yes, it's run, I've got it running on propane. Okay. In our next webisode, Brandon Pfeiffer, publisher of Lawn and Garden Collector magazine, explains why small tractors are the big thing right now.